This week on Kamikaze Cookery, the three of us were arguing. Again. I mean, Jamie Oliver or something, it's not Oh, that no, hard. no, no. Jamie's all, you know, just slosh a bit in. He's never, he never tells you how much to slosh in or why. They know how to do them. Average Joe public doesn't, doesn't know how to do them. So they don't stand a chance. So what we need, really, in order to test this, would be some normal people. Anybody know any normal people? In a world where a long-running argument went like that. Oh shit, we're rolling. Okay, we've decided to test whether normal people can cook recipes from glossy celebrity chef cookbooks. This week, it's my turn. First job is to choose a sleb chef. And frankly, there's only one mockney prat for the job. Jamie Oliver is Britain's most popular cockney chef, which is funny because he's about as cockney as Boris Johnson late one evening, wearing a mink stole, stocking suspenders and a pearl necklace. Ew. Jamie Oliver has produced about three and a half billion books and television shows, and he's introduced words like... pucker, delish, and my mate JK from Jamiroquai to an adoring nation of morons. So, that's our sleb chef sorted. All I need now is a normal person. Are there any normal people out there? Bugger. Plan B. Like most people who would be buying Monkney Pratt's books, Steve Wallace is a very normal person. In between making motion graphics for an internet cookery show, he breaks computer games, he contributes to somethingawful.com, and he's the most normal person I could find on short notice. So, Steve. You ever cooked any celebrity chef recipes? Not so much, no. Not so much? Not really. Not at all. You ever thought about doing one? Not at all. Not in the slightest. Steve seemed perfect. From Jamie's Italy, which I understand is a book, not an invasion attempt, I'd chosen Peaky Con Ragu. Jamie has us hand roll our own noodles, then make up his version of a ragu, which is what we'd call a bolognese sauce. Every part of Italy has its own version of ragu, so I wanted to see how the Mockney Pratt fared against 2,000 years of cooking culture. He says his housekeeper made this look easy. So I couldn't see us having any problems. Right, so what you need is a pound of finely ground semolina flour. Okay. Mixture in premium white. Is that white or brown, do you think? Uh, I don't know. Um... Is that self-raising or non, do you think? I don't think it matters that we actually have any semolina flour. They don't have any semolina flour at all, do really. mm. they? Right, well that is a bit of a bugger, because um, the semolina flour is kind of the main component of the recipe. It could be a problem, could be an issue. Um, I tell you what, hang on. As I flew across the cosmos with the power of special effects, it occurred to me that people who don't have an editing crew to teleport them around might find this aspect of the recipe just a little tricky. Yeah. Right, as it happens, we were talking about this in pre-production, and the producer of Kamikaze Cookery thought this was a perfectly straightforward recipe and all these ingredients are dead easy to get. And he was wrong. Yeah. yeah. Semolina flour. Yeah, not in... Hanging around in Hugh's cupboard. Of course. Jamie tells us to make all the pasta up first, and only then to do the sauce, which takes a further two hours. Some of us want to eat today, so bollocks to that. I made the executive decision to put the sauce on first, and to make up the pasta while it's simmering. Right, um, now it says here that we have to peel the onion, P-E-A-L. 
This is clearly one of those uh, specialist culinary jobs, so I'll do that one. Hear ye! Hear ye! Jamie can't spell! Jamie can't spell! Add a splash of olive oil. How big is a splash? Yes. That's more a dribble, isn't it? It's, it's kind of in between a dribble and a splash. I'd say that was a slosh. We fried the onions, then added tomatoes, mince, rosemary, and bay leaves. Very, very carefully. So when it says here, a saucepan big enough to hold all the ingredients, to be fair, it should really say a stupendously large saucepan. A much saucepan. bigger saucepan than you think you'll need. With the sauce seething gently like a vicar reading the Daily Mail, we had plenty of time for Steve to quickly knock up some pasta. We'd better not be making that much. I was kind of hoping you weren't going to notice that. That's going to take weeks. This was the bit that worried me. Making dough can be a nightmare. However, it turns out that Steve is a master baker. I said baker. Oh, you've done this before. Yes. Sorry. We... <laughs> the, could... the last time I made bread, I think, was in infant school. And I've got absolutely no clue what to do with this stage. See, we never got to do anything interesting in infant school. I was just what I did on my holidays and crap paintings. Okay. I had to do my bread making as a grown-up. At this stage, you're less normal than I am. That's frightening. Yeah. <laughs> Steve worked the dough like a pro, whilst I advised. Slacker. I bet he's gone to the pub. <laughs> I hate kneading. Why do we need to do it? Flour contains short chains of a protein mix called gluten. That comes from the Latin word for glue, so there's our Roman connection again. When we knead, what we're doing is mashing the gluten up, unfolding it into long chains that bond together to form a network. It's a bit like we're creating a wheat-based version of Skynet. The semolina flour is actually important, because semolina has a high gluten content, but the gluten in it is less elastic than the gluten in bread flour. If we'd used bread flour for this, we'd end up with pasta that twanged. Possibly. Take a one millimeter thick, 15 centimetre long wooden skewer. We ain't got one, so you're having a metal one. It is still a skewer. It's still a skewer. Hold it at both ends and press it down lengthways into a piece of dough, as if trying to cut it in half down the middle. Piece of dough, skewer. Like that. Uh, when you've pressed it in halfway... <coughs> okay. Is that halfway? That's about halfway. Roll the dough gently round the stick using your fingertips. You should end up with a very thin sausage-shaped piece of pasta with the stick through the middle. That bit was easy. Then we had to pull the skewer out of the middle. Oh. No, that, that, that's, no that, that, that's not working, is it? That sucks. Not breaking the recipe. You see, I'm getting one very fat noodle. And I'm pretty sure that's not what you should be getting. We had dozens of noodles to make, and so far we'd failed to make one. Only one hope remained. Actually follow the recipe. Now, Jamie did specifically say wooden, wooden skewers, skewers, so let's give him the benefit of the doubt. We have been out to the shop and got wooden skewers. So, try it again. Nuggets. Skewer. Press halfway into the pan. Press halfway in. I like how Jamie makes it sound very easy. He does do a very long paragraph here on how to do it. At least he's not actually giving the impression that it's straightforward, which this is the is a really fucking annoying thing about most celebrity chefs. Is, oh, just do this, it's fine. Twist. Brilliant. Watch what? Brilliant. Look at that. It turns out that Jamie was right. Bugger. So. One noodle down, a lot more to go. <sighs> Take heart, you've only got another 21 to go. Dear Jamie, you were so right about the wooden skewers that I thought I would deliver you several of them. Point first. <laughs> Oh, 
And we're done. Right, I think we've established the reason for the existence of dried pasta that you can buy in a packet. We checked and seasoned the ragu, discovered an innovative new way to crack black pepper, and we found that once again, Jamie just assumes you've got cook pots the size of Belgium. Told you it fits perfectly. Nearly three hours after we'd started cooking, the food was actually ready. It was time to eat. Oh, that looks appetizing. Time to see if it was all worth it. Yeah, let's find out. By the way, thanks for dinner. <laughs> Pasta's a bit doughy, but the sauce is good. The sauce is lovely. The pasta seems to be a lot of work for... For very little gain. Mm. The recipe is mostly, mostly okay. There's a few bits here and there where it's not quite clear. There's a few splashes of things involved. It was three and a half hours work for what is essentially spaghetti bolognese. Yeah. So, Jamie Oliver's peaky con ragu. It was all right. By which I mean it was neither good nor bad. It was slightly better than stuff you might get out of a jar, but it did take about six times as long. And Jamie significantly failed to mention any of the commercial sized pasta pans that you need to have. So it wasn't bad. But he's still a prat. <laughs> Yeah. Oh god, this one's even faster. <laughs>